Imagine being a young man in the 1970s, watching live TV as astronauts walked on the moon and NASA prepared to launch an ambitious new space mission. Maybe you had just bought your first color TV or taken your kids to see Star Wars. Now, fast, forward nearly 50 years, and that same mission is still going. That's not science fiction. That's the ongoing reality of NASA's Voyager probes. These twin spacecraft launched back in 1977 are now the farthest human-made objects from Earth, traveling through deep space far beyond the reach of any planet in our solar system. And against all odds, they're still sending back data, still exploring, still doing their job, despite being built with technology that's older than your first VHS tape player. It's a story of endurance, ingenuity, and pure American grit. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were launched just 15 days apart in the summer of 77. This was a time when personal computers didn't exist, phones had rotary dials, and the most advanced digital memory available could barely hold a page of text. Yet here were two spacecraft, no bigger than a compact car carrying some of the most sophisticated instruments ever put into space. And the reason for the timing? A rare alignment of the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, that wouldn't happen again for another 176 years. One engineer, Gary Flandro from NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, figured out that by timing things just right, a spacecraft could use the gravity of each planet like a slingshot, speeding it along a cosmic shortcut that would normally take decades longer to travel. It was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and NASA didn't miss it. The plan was for each Voyager to study the outer planets up close, something no one had done before. They would take photos, measure magnetic fields, analyze atmospheres, and then presumably fade into silence. But that's not how the story unfolded. As soon as they started flying by Jupiter and Saturn, it was clear these weren't ordinary probes. Voyager 1 delivered jaw-dropping images of Jupiter's moon, Eo spewing lava from active volcanoes, something scientists didn't even know was possible in the outer solar system. Then came pictures of Saturn's moon, Enceladus, a frozen world that might harbor a subsurface ocean, possibly capable of supporting life. Voyager 2's journey was even more historic. It's still the only spacecraft to ever fly by Uranus and Neptune, giving us our first, and only, close-up looks at these mysterious blue giants. It showed us Uranus's bizarre tilted magnetic field and Neptune's supersonic winds, weather systems so fast they put Earth's hurricanes to shame. This was science at its best, bold, surprising, and world-changing. The Voyagers didn't just rewrite textbooks. They inspired generations. And yet, all of this was being done with computing power that's laughable by today's standards. Each spacecraft ran on about 69 kilobytes of memory. For comparison, that's less than the size of a single email. They stored their data on 8-track tape recorders and transmitted it back to Earth using 23-watt radios, the same wattage as a refrigerator light bulb. They had to navigate through space on their own, without real-time control, making decisions and collecting data as they hurtled through the darkness. And the farther they traveled, the harder it became to hear them. As they moved billions of miles away, their signals took more than 18 hours to reach Earth, and NASA had to use massive dish antennas to listen for their faint whispers across the cosmic void. Earth itself became part of the challenge as our planet's growing radio noise from TV broadcast to cell phones, made it harder to pick up the Voyager's already weak transmissions. Yet somehow, the data kept coming. As the Voyagers left, the known planets behind, they kept pushing outward, eventually reaching the edge of the sun's protective bubble, the heliosphere. This is the region dominated by solar wind and magnetic forces that shield us from interstellar radiation. Scientists, had long debated where it ended and what lay beyond. They assumed that when the Voyagers crossed this boundary, called the heliopause, they'd see a clear change in the magnetic field and an increase in cosmic rays. In 2012, Voyager 1 became the first human-made object to enter interstellar space. But what it found was a shock. While the probe detected a rise in plasma density, the expected change in the magnetic field never occurred. 
Instead of a sharp boundary, it appeared to be a blurry, turbulent mixing zone, a place where particles from the sun and stars beyond our system swirled together like water meeting oil. Voyager 2 confirmed this in 2018, still running with several instruments Voyager 1 had lost along the way. Voyager 2 also recorded gentle hums in the interstellar plasma, faint rhythmic waves that suggested even this distant space is far from empty or silent. These ripples are likely caused by shockwaves from solar eruptions that traveled billions of miles to reach them, revealing that the sun's influence stretches farther than we ever imagined. How are these spacecraft still functioning? Each is powered by three radioisotope thermoelectric generators, or RTGs, basically small nuclear batteries. Over time, these have been losing power, and mission engineers have had to get creative to keep the Voyagers alive. They've shut off heaters, science instruments, and backup systems, leaving the remaining gear exposed to freezing temperatures that would destroy most electronics. But incredibly, much of the equipment still works. It's a testament to the brilliance of the people who built them. Back when the idea of a space probe lasting more than 10 years seemed ambitious, let alone 50. One of the most iconic aspects of the Voyager mission has nothing to do with science but with humanity itself. Each probe carries a golden record, a gold-plated copper disc etched with sounds and images from Earth. It includes greetings in 55 languages, music from Bach to Chuck Berry, the sounds of nature, and photos of people from every corner of the globe. Designed by a team led by the late Carl Sagan, the record is essentially a message in a bottle. The chances of an alien civilization ever finding and decoding it are remote. But that wasn't the point. It was about sending a piece of us into the cosmos, a hopeful gesture saying, we were here. As the years pass, the power output from the Voyager's RTGs continues to decline. Soon there won't be enough electricity to power even a single instrument. When that happens, the spacecraft will go silent. No more data, no more updates. But they will keep flying, coasting, through interstellar space like ancient mariners sailing into the unknown. In about 40,000 years, Voyager 1 will pass within 1.6 light years of a star named AC79388. Around the same time, Voyager 2 will come near a red dwarf star called Ross 248. They won't stop, they'll just keep going, long after the Earth has changed and possibly long after humans are gone. There's something deeply moving about that. The Voyagers are more than machines. They're symbols of what we can achieve when we dare to dream big and think long term. They remind us that greatness often comes not from immediate results, but from the willingness to explore the unknown. Step by step, year by year, across unimaginable distances. They've shown us volcanoes on alien moons, storms on distant planets, and the edge of our sun's reach. But most of all, they've shown us ourselves, our courage, our curiosity, and our drive to learn. The story of Voyager is one you might tell your grandchildren. It's not just about science. It's about sticking with something, believing in it, and letting it grow beyond what anyone thought possible. These spacecraft have gone from being tools of discovery to legends of endurance. And somewhere, out, there in the darkness between stars, they continue to carry a tiny whisper from Earth. A message that says we were here, and we cared enough to send a voice into the void.